Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Tonight's film is 1973's Schoolgirl Report, Volume 5, What All Parents Should Know. Here it is, folks. Schoolgirl School Girl Report, Volume 5, What All Parents Should Know. And this is put out by Impulse Pictures, which is more of the kind of uh, erotic sexploitation line of uh, Synapse. This is the back of the DVD. This is Volume 5, What All Parents Should Know, 1973. And... Um, if you want to learn a little bit of the background of Schoolgirl Report, I've done reviews on the first on on the on the first four so far. So definitely check out them in order to see the progression, to see the background. I'm not going to cover that in the subsequent reviews here, uh, just to keep repeating myself. But you'll get to know a lot of the background of uh, of these films. Volume five. This is 1973. It looks like they were making making them uh, very quickly one after the next one. Uh, there are 13 volumes altogether. I will get to all 13 volumes at some point on this YouTube page. This is volume five. On the front here, we have this girl, and she is actually in this volume. Um, and uh, she's also on the cover of another one of the volumes as well with a slightly different uh, thing going on. So it's weird how they use like the same... It's almost the same cover uh, for, for a couple of the volumes. Um, of course, they always say that the uh, girls in this film are anonymous and the people are anonymous. So you never really get the actors' names. You never really get the actresses' names. So it's always a mystery, except for, I believe it was volume four, where we have Christina Lindbergh. But her name was still... I don't believe in the credits at all, uh, but you just knew it was Christina Lindbergh, I guess, especially at that time. So very, very interesting stuff here. Uh, this uh, particular volume, in volume four, we saw that they were really deviating from the interviews on the street and kind of having this um, wraparound storyline of uh, somebody telling all of the stories, so on and so forth. And it, it started to leave there. Volume five... Um, you know, well, Volume 4 was, was really leaving there. Volume 5 officially puts a stamp on leaving uh, that formula. We have no street interviews anymore at all. Um, and uh, definitely just... Um we have some narration at the beginning of the film, but there's no wraparound story. We, we literally have um, an anthology type of, uh, of movie where it's just story after story after story after story after story. Uh, no wraparound, uh, no group of people gathering around telling stories, no teachers telling stories, no counselors, nothing like that. Um, we actually have the stories being told uh, first, in a way, first person, where where each character is actually kind of speaking in their own voice. Gone are the the times where they've kind of put their names on the screen with their ages. It's really the characters now telling their age, telling their names, telling their stories and their backgrounds. Also, Volume Five really solidifies. Um, you know, Gone is is really kind of the 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 pretext that this is an educational film, that this is a uh, Mondo documentary, but definitely an educational film. Volume Five to me really puts away, you know, no qualms, um, uh, no hiding. Uh, that this is, you know, ha has always ultimately been an erotic film, a sexploitation film, a fetish type film, um, anthology, uh, sex. Uh, sexploitation format of a film um, and this volume 5 really has no qualms about it whatsoever and it, it, the educational times are gone all of that uh, seems to be gone now um, I still have a, a kind of a Mondo documentary but, but really not that either it's more of an anthology film now sexploitation style now this one in particular they made a big deal about volume 5 uh, you know kind of being uncensored and uh, it says in the back totally uncut uncensored 85 minute version uh, presented for the first time in the United States and you're wondering like why 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 um, <clears throat> well this particular one has a very controversial segment but what I did was I wrote down uh, the segments and I'll talk a little bit about them when I talk about these films you know they're anthology films and really the you know there's no wraparound story especially starting you know volume five really volume four so we're I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of them um, we have a story involving three schoolgirls who are um you know, really trying to seduce one of the new teachers, and um, 
it's a very, very erotic story. Uh, all the girls in this film, uh, I believe, you know, since it's a German series, they're mostly all German. All the girls, uh, body-wise, uh, physically, faces, everything are all attractive. They're all sexually attractive. They're all attractive. So they definitely, the schoolgirl report, they definitely deliver on the eroticism and picking the best cast of schoolgirls. Um schoolgirls <laughs> and in this particular story uh, we we have you know these three girls and and one of them is faking sick to kind of uh, you know lure the teacher in and then the other two girls want to jump in too um <clears throat> and the uh, kind of the 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 crazy thing here is really kind of the 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 sexual situations and 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 this is a common theme in luring the teacher in um but, but the one girl who's a, the the thickest of the bunch uh who looks great but you know is, is the thickest of the bunch she's really the one who's kind of in charge here and playing the sick girl and uh the hilarious thing is really the responses that happen uh when they get found out um also almost keeping it secretive in a way the the most controversial segment in this bunch uh, comes next where we have a grandfather um, being seduced by his granddaughter and there's a twist in this story where and the granddaughter is actually the girl on the cover and the twist of this story is really um, why the grandfather is having sex with his granddaughter and I don't really want to give that away uh, but that's really kind of the twist in this film and there are some interesting twists and turns in this particular story not film story you know what I'm saying um, and we, 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 we kind of go into this next story here where we get a little bit of a uh, there's no older person now now it's two younger people Gabby and Peter and uh, they're you know they kind of attempt to have sex uh, with each other but they're both inexperienced um, they both don't know what we're what they're doing and uh, we have for the first time uh, some male masturbation we've always kind of had female masturbation female rubbing of, of the vagina and stuff like that but in this one we definitely have a guy yanking on his cranker if you know what I'm saying and I was quite shocked, uh, you know, to, to see it in here. But you definitely have it. He's not erect, but he's still, you know, uh, yanking his, uh, his flaccid cranker. And um, Gabby and Peter are really kind of in love with each other. And they're, but they're inexperienced. They attempt to have sex and they don't. And I'm not going to get into the twist here. Uh, but let's just say they decide to get taught. Uh, individually on their own way and then come back to each other. Uh, so this is a story that also has some controversial elements in here as well and uh, some very um, kind of hilarious masturbation sequences and wild teaching sequences, especially for the guy as he goes and gets taught before he goes back to his uh, girlfriend here. We have a, a, a one of the wildest uh, 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 and most complex stories of the bunch is the religion one, where a girl is trying to seduce her, her priest chaplain teacher. And this one is really wild uh, because she really kind of is in love with him. And there are many twists and turns in this particular story of course there's the sexuality as she's trying to sexually seduce him and <clears throat> there's some wild dream sequences in here that are paced very weirdly not in the typical dream way in a way I don't know it just it just felt weird it seemed like kind of had a bizarre vibe to the dream sequences I mean not quite as bizarre as Christina Lindbergh's in volume four but bizarre in its own in its own right in its own way and um there are some twists and turns here as, you know, the chaplain and there's this biker and, and, and the feelings that this girl has for the chaplain and why she's dreaming, what she's dreaming. And uh, for a moment, you're not really exactly sure if she's actually in love with him uh, or it's just a game. And you're not really sure what's going on. And it, it this is the only one that kind of goes a little bit in the psychology, a little bit of the schoolgirl that kind of mimics the, oh, the other volumes uh, kind of. Uh, educationally or psychologically and uh, then there's a there's a theological twist to this story there's a religious Christian twist to this story that is quite theologically sound within uh, Christian theology it seems so this was a really complicated one we get into one that really has an awesome kind of uh, teen sex comedy vibe right after that kind of heavy one we go into this one um, we have another another guy you know kind of another kind of stereotypical Italian guy but these two workers that are working in a shower and 
working in the shower stalls of a school, I guess, and these two girls are coming in during recess uh, to have sex with them. And it's just the scenarios here that are freaking hilarious. Um, the, the you know definitely erotic sexual scenes because the girls look great and, and and but the girls' physicalities here and matching up with the guys' physicalities is what is so hilarious. And this old woman and paint and a bench and a stool. This is really a comical one. And there's a, a huge teen sex comedy vibe in this particular one. And there's a short Italian guy who is having a problem sexually in the, in the in this uh, particular uh, short because he's so short and uh, the girl is uh, much uh, curvier and bigger and you will see some armpit hair in this particular film I, I think more pronounced and more focused than in the other films you will also see a lot more butts if you love butts this one is for you there was one that was uh, great with feet but if you love butts the butts are very close up with this one actually I found that volume 5 was actually the most sexually explicit one there was actually a guy um, in uh, the story coming up next um, who was uh, almost doing oral on the girl but you know not explicitly and this one ha um, had to do with an 18 year old the oldest one uh, a virgin who uh, meets an older man and she really kind of falls in love with him but he kind of doesn't satisfy kind of goes away and what happens to this girl sexually and uh, socially and this one also has a very disturbing sequence in here of of some violence what happens to this girl as she you know kind of fell in love with a guy who deflowered her and then we end on a kind of a similar note for the schoolgirl report films but with a girl in her class who's a prude and a girl who you know her but but it's a different kind of prude story it has kind of a different slant a different vibe but her friends these or these girls really aren't attacking her she's kind of almost kind of you know, uh, you know, uh, relaxed about it in a way, but they, you know, they, they want to, you know, challenge her to have sex, and they kind of find this guy, um, that they're kind of the town uh, male slut, the school male slut who slept with half the class for her to have sex with. But the, the, the most hilarious thing is the twist in this last story in volume five, which ends on this very romantic note and kind of turns the movie in on itself for the first time, looking at the camera. So, um, <laughs> this film is, uh, I, I, you know, this volume I thought was awesome. Uh, it's very erotic. Um, you know, if, if you like the schoolgirl theme in, in a sex, in a sexy setting, in a sexploitation setting, you know, this film is for you. This one definitely amped up the sexuality and the eroticism. Like I said, if you love butts, if you like, if, like probably the shortest schoolgirl skirts I've ever seen ever in anywhere ever is in this film. Tons of panties. Um, and all the girls look great, um, and probably some girls would like some of the guys in this film, too. Um, and, uh, it's a very, very, uh, more sexually explicit film, and, uh, this is great. The stories are wild, they're very diverse, and quite controversial as well. This is Schoolgirl Report, Volume 5. More volumes to come, uh, what all parents should know. Thank you so much for watching the 10 Room Bizarre YouTube page. Check out all my other reviews, tons of other ones, and, uh, of movies that I believe need to be talked about more, including Schoolgirl Report and also Jess Franco films. Also check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea. Good night and schoolgirl report for us all.